The Orlando Magic are officially eliminated from the postseason. But guess what? The season's not over. We still got three games. And I got some things I want to see the Magic accomplish. Still a lot to do, even if it's very, very little. We'll talk lottery standings too, because I know y'all want to talk about that as well. Let's get to it. It's time for Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is April 6, 2023. My name is Philip Rosenreich. I'm the expert and site editor over at OrlandoMagicDaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at PhilipRR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, what the Orlando Magic still have left to accomplish things that are maybe within grasp, maybe not. We'll talk about what's left to accomplish in the final three games of the Orlando Magic season We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. First, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Obviously, the Orlando Magic are out. Um, no more postseason dreams, no more talking about it, no more pretending it could still happen. It's done. It's over. The field of 10 in the Eastern Conference is set. The Orlando Magic will play these final three games without anything tangible for them to accomplish as a group as far as the standings go, without the opportunity to play Game 83. And if we're going to make a slogan, let's make Game 83 our slogan next year. Um, All that is done. I've gotten calls. I've gotten... Chats, I've gotten mentions, I've gotten a lot of people saying, so what's the point of these final three games? What are the Magic going to accomplish? What are the Magic going to gain from these final three games? Why don't the Magic just finally accept the inevitable? And we will get into the lottery standings. I'm going to wait till the end of the show to do that because I still think there are at least two statistical things worth going for, worth trying to accomplish in these final three games of the season. The Orlando Magic have some statistical anomalies that they have a very good chance of putting to the side. Uh, uh, Things that are signals of where this team is going and and things that, frankly, I I think are just nice and important to try and accomplish. And the first thing I want to mention is Paolo Bancaro. Your presumptive rookie of the year is having an incredible season. Statistically, it may not seem like he is having an incredible season, but he is having a season that really only superstar players have. Just just to be frank, only superstars or future superstars have the kind of year that Paolo Bancaro is averaging. He's averaging 20 points per game. And if Paolo Bancaro is able to finish the year averaging 20 points per game, he will be the first Magic player who is not a center, first non-center to average 20 points per game since Steve Francis back in 2005. I I, I want that to just kind of sit in. Yes, Dwight Howard's averaged 20 points per game since then. Yes, Nikola Vucevic has averaged 20 points per game since then. Not not taking anything away from them. And yes, there have been a few close calls. Jameer Nelson had 19.9 in 2009. Tito Turku was at 19.9, I believe, in 2008 or 2007. I'm blanking a little bit on the year. I think it was 2008. But this is actually kind of a big deal and a big milestone. And and, and soon it won't be a big deal and a big milestone. But in in a league that is so offensively focused, the fact that the Magic haven't had a big-time scorer who can at least hit that that mythical 20-point-per-game mark is kind of a big deal. And we are very much on the verge of it happening today. We are very much on the verge of it happening today very, very soon, or happening this season. Here's the problem. Paolo Bancaro is right at 20 points per game. 20.0 points per game if you look uh, on NBA, uh, on all the leaderboards. The reality is he is averaging 19.95 points per game. He is actually behind the pace. 
and even scoring 20 points per game could knock him down just a little bit. If Paolo Bancaro is going to score 20 points per game for the whole season, he's got to score 23 points if he plays one more game, 43 points if he plays two more games, and 63 points if he plays three more games. That actually gets him to, uh, to, to 20 on the dot. So obviously there's some wiggle room in there if we're going to go 1995 is the number um let me let me actually uh, I didn't do that math but he's got to average he's got to sc- average 20 points per game he's got to score 60 points 61 points to be safe the rest of the way to get to that mythical 20 point per game mark again the magic haven't had a non-center average that much since Steve Francis in 2005 no rookie's done it for the magic since Shaq obviously uh Penny didn't do it by the way uh, and no rookie has done it since Zion Williamson in 2020. That was done in 24 games. And Luka Doncic in 2019. Before that, the list of guys who've averaged 20 points per game as a rookie is a veritable list of future superstar players. Like there are a lot of there are a lot of big name players on that list. And so Paolo Bancaro getting there is a big deal. Uh, a, a, a huge deal. And again, literally, all he has to do is score 60 more points in the next three games. 61 points in the next three games. And he will have that mark. He will average 20 points per game. And that, uh, you know, at least what it says in, in the record book. Again, I, I think this is a big deal. And I think this is something really, really important that the Magic need to accomplish. And the Magic need to see their young player accomplish. A, I think that silences the rookie of the year debate, which was already silenced, but let's just let's just put a nail in that coffin and, and get it over with. Ben Carroll's had a really special year, and, and it would be nice to see him finish it with at least one more really special game. Um, he's had some really good games to close the season. He's playing fantastic to close the season. One more big game would be great, would be fantastic. But obviously, there's a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do, and, and it's not a guarantee that he'll do it. It's not a guarantee he'll play these final three games. So again, if he scores 60 more points, 40 more points, or 20 more points, he will likely have it. If he doesn't play at all, he's already got it. We're all done there. So if, if, if that's what you want, so be it. Um, on top of this, it's not likely, but I want to put this on your radar too. Franz Wagner is sitting at 18.8 points per game. Uh, and getting him to 20 points per game would be a lot harder. To get to exactly 20 points per game, he'd need to average 45.7 points per game over the final three games. The Magic, though, have not had a 20 po- had two players score 20 points per game in the same season since Shaq and Penny in 1996. I want to note these things, and I want to just point them out, sort of to just a preview the kind of players the Magic have right now and the kind of team they're building and the fact that we're even talking about this three games from the end of the season, again, three games that don't have a lot of meaning, obviously, but three games to the end of the season, the fact that we could talk about these things I think is a clear sign that in the future they're going to happen. Paolo Bancaro is going to average 20 points per game for his career, or, or for, at least for his early Magic career. I have no doubt that this is not the last time we'll talk about Paolo Bancaro averaging 20 points per game. I have no doubt that Franz Wagner will be in the conversation to average 20 points per game as well in the very near future. He's been flirting with it. He's had you know some ups and downs this season. He's been flirting with it, but he is finishing the season exceptionally strong. Uh, and again, I don't think he'll hit 20 points per game. I think that goal is a little bit out of reach. But again, the Magic have a real scoring duo. And now it's just about surrounding them with the right players to get the most out of them. There are individual goals to achieve here. There are averages and numbers to hit. And, you know, if if Jamal Mosley is the player's coach that I imagine he is, I am sure he knows this. I'm sure he knows what contract ex- incentives might exist in players' contracts. Well, most of these guys are on rookie contracts anyway. Getting them to hit them is a good thing at this point in the season. So maybe we see the Magic force some force some action to get that done. Um, but I, I'm I'm excited for the Magic to have their first 20 point score in a very very long uh, first non center. All due respect to Nikola Vucevic and Dwight Howard, first non center to score 20 points per game since I was in high school. <laughs> I, I was a I was a junior in high school when Steve Francis hit that mark. 
and no non-center has done it since. That's 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 pretty crazy. We're coming to almost on you know 18 years, you know, our 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 our, our that 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 record is ready to go to college at this point. That's that's kind of wild if you ask me. We'll see if Paolo can hit it. I think this is the year. I think he's going to hit it. Uh, we'll see if he can do it. The team though has another statistical mo- wonder, a statistical marvel to accomplish. Why I think it's important for the Magic to make one final statement defensively and perhaps even a little progress offensively. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our friend at Ibotta. We all go out watching your closet grow after purchasing all the season's latest trends. How about also watching your cash back grow with each purchase with Ibotta? You can earn cash back on every shopping trip, whether it's to the grocery store or to the department store. Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items, produce to personal care, to pantry goods. Either link your loyalty account or upload your receipt after you shop and get your cash back. It's that easy. The average Ibotta user earns $120 per year in real cash back. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. Or you can use your cash back to buy that flight you've been eyeing that game you're dying to go to, or the fancy dinner you've been craving. A typical basket of groceries was more than $50 more expensive at the end of 2022 than the beginning of the year due to inflation. You could earn two and a half times that in cash back from Ibotta, or even more depending on how much you use Ibotta. Ibotta gives you real cash back, not points. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers too when you start with Ibotta, including Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKED when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app and use code LOCKED. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A, 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 I guess, I don't know, I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKED today. So we talked about some individual goals and and, and, and Paolo Bacaro hitting 20 points per game I think is a really good individual goal for the Magic to make sure it gets done here in these final three games. Franz Wagner getting to 20 points per game, that's going to be a little bit tougher, but um, again, I think, I think we can all see that in the team's future. There is, I think, still one team goal that I think is worth pursuing. And, and honestly, if I'm Jamal Mosley, regardless of who's available to me and, and who plays these final three games, this, I think, is the big challenge for this team the rest of the way. If, if I'm Jamal Mosley looking to motivate my team, there are two things that I'm motivating my team with. One is finish above 500 uh, at home. We'll get to that in the third segment. The second is about the team's defensive rating and really even the offensive rating. The Magic right now are tied for 15th in the league in defensive rating at 113.6 points allowed per 100 possessions. They're tied with the Oklahoma City Thunder. They are just 0.1 points per possession behind the 14th team. I believe that is the Miami Heat. For this team, for this young team to finish in the top half of the league in Defensive rating, I think, would be a huge accomplishment. I think that would be a big statement of this team's potential. With all the ups and downs they've had defensively, the strong moments they've had, the the times that they've struggled, the inconsistency, for them to end the season, and yes, I know the end of the season, defenses get wonky. Uh, Everything, you know, you throw everything out, especially these last games with so many of the playoff seedings. Already pretty much set, especially in the Eastern Conference. I think the Nets are locked into where they're going to be. Uh, the Cavs certainly are. We'll talk about Thursday's game here in a minute. Um, the Cavs are already locked into the fourth seed. And, you know, Miami is probably going to be locked into that sixth seed uh, by the time we get to Miami on Sunday. So hopefully that'll be a game with the Magic, you know, uh, we'll, and we'll get in the lottery standings here too. But so many of these teams locked in. There's going to be some wonky, weird results. We're going to see some weird lineups. But to have a top half of the league defense, I think just I think that's a statement. That's a statement of intention. That's a statement of pride. And, and so much of this now is about pride. To be able to sit there and say, we have 
one of the best defenses in the league, or we have a defense that is above average in the league, to me, that's a statement of growth. That's a statement that, hey, we can take the next step. We can go from level A to level B, and it's not going to be a problem. We know what we're capable of, and now we can see it and point to it on our board saying, we did that. As small as that is, that's a victory. And right now, I think we're looking for victories. We're looking for little things to achieve. We're looking for little things to still strive for. And so getting a defense that is in the top half of the league, I think would be huge. I think that that is a big deal for this Magic team and a big deal for the growth that this team wants to show. The other place where I think there is definitely a point of pride, and, and again, this is a small victory here. I'm, I'm looking for small victories to motivate this team if I'm the coaching staff. Getting out of the bottom five in offensive rating, I, I think is, it's not a statement that the Magic's offense is fine. It's not. They got a lot of work to do. They have a lot of things they need to develop. Uh, but I think it's a statement that, hey, we're not as far off as we think. Like we, 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 could, we could play a little bit. We're, you know, we're not one of the worst teams in the league anymore. The Magic currently rank 26th in the league in offensive rating at 111.9 points per 100 possessions. Again, moving these numbers around is a little bit trickier because there's, you know, one game isn't going to shift it. You know, I've seen a really good game maybe shift it up two ten two one two you know point two points per 100 possessions in one game. They're looking to make little moves and and, and you know maybe the Magic are too far back uh, and would need a 150 point game or something like that to to make a real real jump. But the reality is this. In the 11 years since Dwight Howard left, and I believe I did include this season in, in calculating this, in the 11 years since Dwight Howard left, the Magic could finish in the bottom five in the league in offensive rating seven times. As Zach Lowe of ESPN.com constantly reports whenever talking about the Magic, the Magic had been in the bottom 10 in offensive rating every year since Dwight Howard left. The Magic have been awful at offense. Just, just no getting around it, no changing it. They have been really bad. They're still bad. You know, and, and, and one game or three games isn't going to change that. However, I, I do think that it, it would be beneficial. Again, it, it's about building confidence. It's about kind of showing this team like, hey, we can do this. You know, you know we, we can point to something tangible to say, hey, we went from here to here. Showed marked improvement. Showed our potential. Showed what we can do. Maybe I'm too touchy-feely. Maybe I am looking for something to build on or something to focus on here. But I think that's something. I think that 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 does mean something. That is something that this team can hang its hat on. And yeah, it, it's not something that we're popping the champagne. You know, it, you know, we're a little bit of that 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 meme of the guy celebrating on the podium there. Um, but I, I I think that is something. Like I think it is something to say. Like hey. You know, we got a long way to go, but look how far we've come. And, and especially in this kind of a season, that kind of stuff's important. Now, again, we're talking about small things, and I think the defensive thing is more important than the offensive thing because the offense needs complete rework. The defense has done some legitimately good things. And, and I and I think this, te- this team does deserve credit for, you know, yes, inconsistent defensively, but showing hints of who they're going to be on the defensive end. And to finish in the top half of the league... I think is pretty important. I think that that is a big deal. Now, how they're going to do that, A, they got to win some games. That's going to help. Um, they got to play well. And, and, and that hasn't always been the case. That hasn't always been the simple thing for this team to do. But the Magic are more than capable of showing us who they are and taking that big growth step that we're waiting to see from them. We're going to talk about the standings. We're going to talk about Thursday's game because there's one more thing the Magic need to accomplish to end the season that I think would be really special and really important to the team, to the players on this team, and yes, to Magic fans. We'll get to that plus the lottery standings update coming up here in just a moment. But first, a quick word from our friends over at FanDuel. The NBA playoffs are on the horizon. It's only a matter of time before the NBA playoffs begin. And now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because new customers 
get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. The Magic obviously hit their over on the over under. The Palo Banco rookie of the year has essentially been taken off the board. But you can still predict who's going to win the NBA championship. Will it be the Milwaukee Bucks? Will it be the Philadelphia 76ers? Will it be the Denver Nuggets? Or will it be the Phoenix Suns? Or will it be someone we don't even think of? The playoffs this year present endless opportunities. So search for your bargain there. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. There is, I think, one more tangible goal worth talking about here uh, to end the season. And that is to have a winning home record. You know, get I get it. I am talking about small things. I'm talking about things that are very intangible and very contained to this season. That's all that's left. Unless you're looking at the lottery. We're going to look at that in a second here. Unless you're looking at that. Honestly, I still feel like this is important. And if you listen to the players and how they've talked about this, this, this goal especially, you watch the fan base and watch the fan and feel that energy inside the Amway Center... I think getting a winning home record is really important. I think that of any goal that the Magic can accomplish the rest of the season, the most important thing is to win Thursday's game. And and honestly, if I'm Jamal Mosley, and I know they took Wednesday off from practice, if I'm Jamal Mosley, I am treating that like a playoff game. If we're going to get one more hurrah, if management wants the team to not put out their best lineups for those last two games. This is the last hurrah. This is the one you want. Yes, we want to beat the Heat, but I think getting this one is really, really important. Again, it's just it's just more proof that the Magic are on the right path and doing the right things. A 21-20 and 20 home record is, again, a small thing, but I think it, it, it means a lot. It means a lot to the organization because it shows that, hey, if you're a Magic fan going to a home game, there's a better chance than not that you're going to win, that you're going to see a win. And and I think that matters for selling tickets. And I think that matters for fan morale. The fans at the Amway Center this year have been fantastic. You know, honestly, like the game of the year to me at the Amway Center was the amount of fans that showed up to watch the Magic beat the Mavericks in a 5.30 tip before a freaking hurricane hit. That was insane. It was crazy to me to see all the fans show up and be a part of that. And really, really like give this team so much energy. And they've given this team energy all year long. It has been a wild and raucous season in the Amway Center. And for the Magic to deliver for the fans, it's small. You don't think it matters. It doesn't maybe matter so much in the big picture on the court. But for a franchise trying to sell tickets, trying to sell the future... This stuff matters. This stuff is going to make fans show up more next year when they're ready to take another step. This is proof of concept. This is belief. And winning on the home floor matters. For young teams, it matters because that's where you're going to build your cushion. The Magic could have been better at home. They dropped some games at home that they shouldn't have, um, especially early in the year, especially during that home stand a few weeks ago. But the Magic are going to establish the Amway Center as a tough place to play. And that starts today. That starts with this game tonight. Now, granted, it's been it's become a lot easier. It's become a lot different than maybe we anticipated. The Cleveland Cavaliers have already announced that Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, Karis LeVert, and Donovan Mitchell are all out. Um, Evan Mobley is the only one out with rest. Everyone else has an injury. Um, everyone's nicked up at this point, so I will not totally question the severity of those injuries, but... The Cleveland Cavaliers are locked into the 4 seed. They can't go anywhere. Those guys are getting the night off. Those guys are getting the night off. And so Orlando will face a severely depleted Cleveland Cavaliers team. Whether they play their full complement, whether they really go for it, whether they learned how to take care of their business. You know, they certainly did Sunday against Detroit. They played well Tuesday. 
the Magic are going to have a really good chance. And yes, it, it will, may not be as, it may be a Pyrrhic victory here. Getting this win is going to mean something. It's going to mean something for the franchise. And frankly, it's going to mean something to the players. I think the players know that they're 20 and 20 at home. I think they know that winning that 21st game is going to be very, very meaningful to them. Of course, we can't sit here and talk about it without talking about the lottery standings because that's going to be the story that dominates everything. The Magic are currently 8th in the lottery standings. They, that would give them, a, if they keep it solo, a 6% for, chance for the top pick and a 26.3% chance for the top 4. So still a 1 in 4 chance of getting into that top 4. They would have 60 lo- number combinations uh, in the ping pong drum. They are ahead of the Indiana Pacers and Washington Wizards by a half game. The Wizards lost Wednesday. I believe the Pacers did too. So they might be a full game ahead of the Pacers now. For sixth, I'm not getting into what happens. If they tie that, we'll deal with that after the season. They're also one game ahead of the Blazers for fifth. And so we are looking at a very, very tight lottery standing where, yes, every win's going to cost you, especially with just three games remaining. Washington and Portland have shut down their veterans. Damian Lillard's done for the year. Bradley Beal, Kristaps Porzingis, and Kyle Kuzma are essentially done for the year. We saw that when the Magic played the Wizards last Friday. Teams are still spunky, so don't count teams out yet. But the Magic are the Magic, and honestly, even the Pacers have kind of shut some of their guys down too. The Magic are essentially the only team that still feels like they're going for it. And every indication from the Magic is that they are going to go for it. Of no two in the lottery standings, then the Magic are two games ahead of the Utah Jazz for ninth. The ninth pick gives you a 20.3% chance at the top four and a 4.5% chance for the top pick, 45 number combinations in the lottery. We'll do the lottery explainer a little bit, so don't worry if you're a little confused by I'm saying number combinations. I tend to, I like to think about the lottery as it actually is. Um, you know, so I, I, I will note that the number of lo- number combinations the Magic have uh, for the lottery. Obviously, those are, that's a big drop-off, and it's a big drop-off from five where obviously you have a little bit of a better chance and the magic have played their way yes they played their way out of the lot out of that lottery position but as i've argued and i think i i still and i still believe this i just i don't i don't believe in taking the magic the magic have their guy the magic have their guys and and you know yes it would be nice to get one of those picks but you can't rely on a lottery you can't rely on a lottery to deliver something for you um it's silly to do that. You wouldn't do that. That's not how you would trust your finances. The Magic got lucky already, and who knows what will happen on lottery night. But the Magic, I think, still have a lot to work on. And, 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 and I'm a big believer in this. You have 82 games in the season. And for a young team, and look, Washington's a veteran team. Portland's a veteran team. For a young team, you don't get those 82 games back. You don't get to try again with those 82 games. You get 82 games. That is it. That is all you get if you're a lottery team. And I think to give away an opportunity to get better, to learn how to win, to just pick up that habit of winning is silly. They were promised 82 opportunities to get better. You spend all 82. You do not waste that opportunity because game stuff, games are completely different from practices. And honestly, even if the Magic do to... Cleveland on Thursday, what they did to Detroit on Sunday. That Detroit game was really fun. It was really good because it showed the Magic could have that killer instinct to put a team away uh, when they were undermanned and just prove that they were the better team, to be the more dominant team. You learn something from every game, and, and I, just, I just can't imagine not, not taking advantage of that learning opportunity. That's me, though. That's how I feel. That's what I believe. Um, I understand the arguments for why you shouldn't believe that, for why you should do the other way, for why you should care, why the ma- why it would be beneficial for the Magic to lose these games. But honestly, I think the Magic do view Thursday's game as really important. I think they're going to try and win it, and, and I think they're going to accomplish at least that goal. I think they'll get the Palo at 20 points per game, and we'll see about the rest. Like I said, these goals are very small. They're, 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 they're low on that pecking order. They're not important in the long run. But I do think they do have an impact, and I think they will help this team carry momentum into their offseason as they show who they can be and what they can do. For now, I want to thank you 
for listening to Locked On Magic. Of course, find us on Twitter at at, you can find me on Twitter at Philip R underscore MD. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Search your tune in to Himalaya, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the places in all podcasts to your podcast enable listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can, you can, of course, follow us there on Twitter at OMagicDaily. We have complete coverage of Thursday's home finale against the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'll be at the Amway Center for that one. We want to thank you for making Locked on Magic your first listen today. So go make your second listen, the Game to Game NBA podcast. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. That's good, dude, for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic. This has been Philip Rossman Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.